Hello everybody, my name is Sean. Welcome back to Dream Daddy. We are episode numero 8 right now, which is so exciting. We're getting close to finishing this up. I think it went one more date with Hugo and then maybe something else. I don't know, but we'll see. Anyway, we're going along with Hugo. It's been really, really sweet and really cool. He's totally into wrestling, but shh, it's a secret. And as always, let's get cracking. Here we go. It's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed. Her knees hooked up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Something happened? No, nothing happened. Go away. Amanda, get out. Okay, okay. Read the room and shut the door behind me. Once they're closed, I can hear it crying again. Mm, something's going on. Wow. Why does she answer so upset? She seemed fine earlier. She was just so open with me. Did I do something wrong? Was she mad at me? I guess she wasn't before. She definitely is now. I can't remember the last time she snapped at me like that. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon, or maybe she'll be willing to talk about what's ever been bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle on the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Thanks. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster level up and makes her still freezer brain waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh. Okay. I haven't seen her actually this in a long time. She's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully, this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on a wall. And I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. And then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her in for ice cream, and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come in here for a second? There's a moment of silence. Yeah, I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. And I, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language you both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad, it took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and I had to start over and sorry you're sad, but I support you 100%. This is beautiful. And it's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. Lettuce. This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The best friend. You got it. Wow, proud of you. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P, and I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Yikes. So, another important piece of information is, um, God, this is embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah, and, uh, that's the thing. What? Whoa. I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learned from the worst. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party because I didn't want to start drama, so I kept quiet and going about my business. 
Manus says, on the one day I invite everybody out to not just them all, and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones on for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just see nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips, and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. So I go to the mall anyway. I get to the food court, and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah, all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? It's better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them, and realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yes, I know. So I storm over there, and I'm like, hey! And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt, because of course she does, and Emma just, Emma R just like glares at me. Grace. Grace. Nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the... Boring one. Well, yeah. That's not the important part. Grace is the one that nobody really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything, and I'm just like, you guys suck, which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but like, I'm very angry and really embarrassed, and I wanted to get out of there. So I left, without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to the shitty day, and I immediately drafted a super long text to a group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R asking how long the Noah things been going on. I'm sorry, I know that's a lot. Are you still following? What did Emma R say? Ooh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R said, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads, word for word, an arduously long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, I did not understand what she's talking about. This is all beyond me, and I'm trying my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for, like, months. So I told her that she's been a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay, and then she left me on red. And then, wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like, she saw my message and didn't reply, and I know it's because I read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to MIP about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable, and I'm betting her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that MIP sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda... I'm so sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but Emma R's been there since Mom died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Man, this adds remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. I'm as mad as I am at everybody. Like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sort of tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, would I have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago now? <laughs> but seriously, I know you probably won't want advice, but feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Real friends don't do that. High school sucks. Real friends don't do that. When you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure out that myself, and I wish I'd learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting the effort to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours, because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. I looked down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Well, good talk. Manny up to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yes. Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Amanda. Oh, I love you too, Dad. <sighs> I do. And uh, next time on on Sean Plays, we're going to go on a date with Hugo. I don't know how long I've been recording, 
but I feel like I've been recording long enough for it to like be time. So, it might be a short episode, it might not, I really don't know, but please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this, please check out our Patreon, check out our Discord, and as always, thank you, thank you so, so much for watching, it truly does mean the world to us. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye!